good morning everybody um, today we are going to discuss about the flux ray protocol most of you people are aware about the flux ray pro protocol uh, yeah today we'll uh, discuss a little bit of detail about the protocol uh, how it is implemented uh, which application we are using this which scenario we will use the flux ray protocol okay uh, flux ray protocol mainly used in the automotive field uh, mainly this uh, flux ray protocol is used for the highly critical application like uh, brake by wire or steer by wire uh, applications uh, where high redundancy high redundancy required uh, also deterministic nature of the data is required such applications uh, we are using this uh, flux ray protocol and also the speed yeah flex ray uh, brake by wire uh, steer by wire means uh, it's a braking application uh, automotive braking application we are using the flex ray protocol mainly to collect the data from the sensors uh, mainly nowadays uh, the braking system is uh, mostly electromechanical so uh, earlier it was with mainly with hydraulics uh, now it's uh, moving to the electromechanical brakes so the, mainly the brake system is controlled by the motors so uh, this motors near to operate this motors uh, we have to get some data from the sensors so this uh, from the sensor this data is sending uh, through the uh, flex protocol so such applications uh, high, were highly critical uh, data this data are very highly critical and uh, uh, redundancy is required here also determine it should be the deterministic what do you mean by the deterministic the uh, data transmission should guarantee <laughs> that is the meaning of the determinist okay so uh, mostly uh, com uh, automotive communication uh, area can protocol is most widely used in protocol can protocol can is the most widely used the protocol in the communication area can protocol uh, i think everyone is aware about the can protocol can go up to 1 mbps data transmission if we need to transmit a higher data speed then uh, we cannot use by can also can is not the deterministic transmission it's uh, using the arbitration technology uh, can sending data based on the arbitration. It's not a deterministic uh, communication method. So uh, then from, okay, for if you want to send the data with higher speed, there is a possibility in the CAN itself, a CAN FD is another option. CAN FD can transmit up to 10 MBBS. But again, this is not a deterministic, both are not a deterministic. Both uh, protocol is working based on the arbitration principle up to 10 mb sorry it's not a 16 it's up to 10 mbps yeah. okay. so so in that place uh, in that case yeah if you uh, want to send the data with a higher speed and it should be the deterministic nature hmm? in that case uh, the flex ray is the best option okay. so if you consider the flex ray uh protocol or flux ray communication in uh, draw here so mainly it's a mi microcontroller microcontroller will have a flux ray controller this is a flux ray flux ray controller inside the microcontroller then from microcontroller to from the microcontroller, this will interface to a flex ray transceiver. Transceiver. From the transceiver, you will connect the, you will have the output BP and the BM. Mainly, this is the general naming convention used for the flex ray BP and the BM pins. This will be connected to the flex ray bus communication bus this is flex ray bus this 
should be connected to the flux ray communication bus. Okay, so this is a basic uh, structure of the flux ray communication. So from this, it is clear that uh, in flux ray communication, there will be a communication controller. From the communication controller, flux ray transceiver will be there. From the flux ray transceiver, this will be connected to the uh, bus. So what is the purpose of this uh, flux ray microcontroller, flux ray controller? Flux ray controller will define the protocol of flux ray communication. In flux, uh, there will be a protocol for this communication. Every communication will have a protocol. So flux ray uh, communication protocol is defined by the flux ray controller inside the microcontroller. Usually uh, it is integrated with the microcontroller. This flux ray controller is uh, integrated with the microcontroller. Flux ray controller is integrated with the microcontroller. It can be separate also, but most of the cases uh, uh, in our application also, uh, this will be integrated with the microcontroller. Okay. Then uh, from the flux ray controller, this will be interfaced to the, this is interfaced to the flux ray transceiver. Flux ray transceiver. Flux, what is the role of this flux ray transceiver? The role of the flux ray transceiver is uh, it's converting uh, logical streams to physical stream. This is a physical world. The bus is connected here, BP and the BM. This is connected to the bus, flux ray bus. It can connect in different way. This is connected to the flux ray bus. Through some termination resistor, it is connected to the flux ray bus. So here it's a physical world. Micro will controller will not understand this physical signal. So we have to convert this physical signal to the logical signal. Similarly, microcontroller will send some data logical signal. That it's bidirectional basically. Microcontroller will send will send, send some logical signal to the outside world. But outside world will not understand this logical signal. So this has to convert to the physical signal. This function is mainly doing by the flux ray transceiver. This is a rough overview about this uh, communication uh, means block diagram. So if you come to the detailed section, uh, yeah, you can say take the flux ray transceiver. If you take a flux ray transceiver, flux ray transceiver, uh, mainly this will be connected with the common mode choker. This is output of the flux transceiver. Then you have a termination resistor. Then again, this is the BP and the BM. Why this common mode check is used? This is mainly used to protect from the common mode noise on this uh, connector pin. Because this is connected to the external world, there can be a uh, common mode noise on the uh, external world. This noise can couple into the uh, transceiver. To avoid that, we are using a common mode choker. Sometimes we'll use the split termination also. What is split termination? R1, R2, this will be the termination resistor and there will be a capacitor connected in from the middle point, there will be a capacitor connected to the ground. This is called split termination. The purpose of this split termination is again, uh, to filter out the noise level, high frequency noise, uh, high frequency signal on this uh, BP line will get a path to the ground, high frequency noise level. So if you see the, the flux ray electrical or physical layer specification, uh, there are uh, recommendations for this, uh, uh, this um, value of this plate termination resistance values and capacitor values and the value of the common mode choker. Uh, inductance, common mode inductance, and uh, leakage inductance uh, values. There will be a uh, specification for this. Uh, who are is uh, interested to uh, get more details on these uh, values? Please refer the electrical specification of that flux ray transceiver. This is uh, open documents. It's available. Uh, uh, yeah, you can Google it. You will get it. Yeah. 
so uh, this is just an introduction of the flexerine communication now i would like to show you some document and we'll start with the, that and also sometime we'll come back to the whiteboard again yep uh, i would like to share some other document you share your i hope everyone is able to see my desktop so uh, okay the in uh, here the lot of description is here i don't want to go into the descriptions detailly but i will uh, cover everything it's brief yeah so the main purpose of the flexor communication is giving the redundancy how it is giving the redundancy in the flex ray communication if you see and uh, if you see the flex ray communication there will be a two uh, transmission section and the reception section will be there inside the single flex ray transceiver two channels will be there so you can send uh, the same information in the channel a and also the say, uh, same information you can send in the channel b so both inform uh, both channel will have we can send the same information both channel can send the data with up to 10 mbps so if you lose one channel data you will have another channel data so in that way you can keep the redundancy of the data so you i think you got my point uh, same one single flex ray controller the single flex ray controller will send the data into the two channel so it's only channel is different the flex ray controller is the same only channel is a different eh? clear my drawings what i mean is a flex ray flex ray controller flex ray controller is single but the, from the same flex ray controller, you will connect it to the channel. Same information will send to the channel A and channel B. So you both channel will have the same information with the 10 MBPS speed. So in that way, you can keep the redundancy in the communication. If you lose one channel data, you will have another channel data. Yeah, that is the redundancy. And what do you mean by the deterministic? I, I told you, I said initially, uh, flex ray communication is a deterministic communication. What is the meaning of the deterministic communication? Deterministic means uh, if you take the CAN communication, there is no guarantee to send a particular uh, ECU, you can send the data uh, in the CAN protocol. CAN is mainly used in the arbitration method. So arbitration method means who has the, which message has the higher priority, that message uh, or which issue uh, has the higher priority, that issue will win the bus and uh, he will send the data. Uh, the issue with uh, lower priority will uh, cannot uh, get the bus for the data sending. So, yeah, he can understand. If every time uh, <clears throat> compared to all other ECU, this ECU uh, data priority is low, this ECU cannot send the data. That's one problem in the CAN communication. So basically using the arbitration method. But in uh, uh, FlexRay protocol, it's using the uh, time division, time division multi DMA, time division multiplexing, TDM, time division multiplexing. So, uh, if you take the flex ray communication, uh, flex ray communication, we can divide into the communication cycles, cycle, communication cycle one, communication cycle two, communication cycle three, four, five, et cetera, et cetera. If you take a one single communication cycle, uh, that communi single communication cycle, you can divide it into there is this one communication cycle will it's for for example i'm telling one example it's for the one millisecond time this one millisecond time you can divide into the different number of slots 
So you can split into many number of slots. Each slot will be assigned to a particular ECU. Maybe this will be assigned to the ECU A. This slot is assigned for the ECU B. This slot is assigned for the ECU C. This slot is assigned for the ECU D. This slot is assigned for the ECU E, like this. So each slot will be assigned for a particular ECU. Then uh, each ECU can send its data in the, uh, that uh, particular slot. Uh, for example, the ECU A will not send the data in this slot. ECU A will send the data only in this. One particular issue can own many number of slots. For, for example, issue A of this slot. After some time, um, I can allot uh, another slot for the issue A. So in this case, issue A has two slots, this slot and this slot. I hope you understood. So yeah, every issue will get a slot. And uh, one issue can own many number of slots. That's not a problem. So uh, everyone can send the data, it's guaranteed. So this is the way it's uh, ensuring it's a deterministic nature. Okay, so if you take the communication cycle, uh, as I mentioned already, uh, one communication cycle, you can take this into the divide into the number of slot, many number of slots. One, I'm taking one communication cycle. One communication cycle, mainly we can classify into three parts. One is a static segment, one is a dynamic segment, network ideal. One is static, static segment, dynamic, segment static segment dynamic segment then network ideal time these are the three parts static segment means uh, yeah as i mentioned uh, the particular communication cycle static segment means it will have the number of slots each dynamic segment uh, it's not necessary every communication cycle dynamic seg segment should be present uh, should present uh, it's optional case actually basically network ideal uh, what is doing in the dynamic segment the dynamic segment uh, static segment it's uh, fixed uh, every issue will get one slot uh, for set the data uh, that is ensured uh, when dynamic segment is basically like a CAN protocol only. It's uh, based on the event uh, triggering, which uh, EC has the higher, some EC have got some higher priority data. That particular data will send in the dynamic segment. It can, that particular EC can send the data in status segment. Then suddenly some event happen, then it's no need to wait for the, to get its slot. It can send the data in the dynamic segment itself. That particular uh, option is available. So the the dynamic segment is uh, giving uh, more flexibility uh, for the priority messages. So priority message can send in the dynamic segment. Network ideal time is used to synchronize the clock. Uh, it's a time allotted to synchronize the clock uh, of this communication because uh, this is a synchronized communication. This synchronized synchronous communication flexorized synchronous communication. So the, the clock synchronization is very important. That clock synchronization, we have some dedicated time in this uh, flux communication. That dedicated time in every communication cycle, each communication cycle, there will be a dedicated time for the clock synchronization. That dedicated time is called the network ideal time. It will correct the if some deviation in the clock uh, timing calculation. It will because as I mentioned, uh, each node will be should be aware about a very smart when my slot will come for example the node a issue node means issue node a can send the data only in this so node a should know my slot reached i i should send the data or i should not send the data here i should send the data only. so node a should have the timing information when uh, when is when is my slot that time i can send it data so each node should be synchronized. That synchronization part will do in the network ideal time. So all the nodes which is connected to the flexor communication running with the same clock, and it will be everything is synchronized. Uh, I hope it is clear. Yeah. Then. Uh, 
okay so that is called the redundancy i have discussed a little bit more but it's not a problem we'll uh, choose a visit in physical topology okay okay yeah next is the topology best connecting topology yeah. Uh, well, uh, this is the part I just now I discussed uh, system integration. So uh, bus node A, bus node B, bus node C. These are the assume that uh, all these things are the different ECUs. Node A is another one ECU, node B is one ECU, node C is another ECU. Okay, so this is the uh, communications one part, take one particular communication cycle. So node A particular ECU is sending a data A1 in this particular slot. Then next another ECU sending data B1 in this particular slot. Then next C1, uh, no, another ECU sending data C1 in this particular slot. Okay. C1 is sending the data in this particular slot. Understood? Then you can understand the color with by color itself. You can understand. See when I send in the data sends for you. Then uh, next slot who is occupying again the node A. So uh, that's what I mentioned. A particular node can own many number of slot. It's sending a message A1 here. It's sending another message A2 in the another slot. Okay. Then uh, A3 is sending another. Uh, yeah, B2 next is B2. Then next again it's assigned to this uh, this. Uh, Similarly, so each particular node uh, is assigned a particular slot. Eh? It will send the data only that time only. Uh, this is a uh, yeah. Again, I mentioned the 500 Kbps scan protocol or oh, can communication topology cannot fulfill the higher requirements for the tolerance due to the lack of the redundant structures. And a can a man can also deliver the maximum data refinery for series in series version. There are some automotive OEM we are already explaining the whole tolerance. Yeah, that's a reason for this flexible communication communication architecture. Hmm. Yeah, this again I will explain. Yeah, flex rate topologies. Well, we will start with this. What do you mean the flex rate topologies? So we can connect the uh, different ECU. How we are connecting the different ECU in the bus? So that is the mainly in, uh, indicated by this flex rate topologies. So flex rate node, you can see this node. Maybe I'll use uh, Spotlight. I uh, will use the spotlight issue. It's not able to, I'm not able to get the spotlight thing. Okay, it's maybe this option is available in the whiteboard. Okay, leave it. Oh, okay, I'm not uh, much familiar about this uh, uh, Zoom. Okay, just a beginner, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, this flux ray node here, uh, the first flux ray node is here. Uh, this is one ECU, assume that this is one ECU, this is another ECU. So if it is a only two ECU, we can connect point to point. Okay. If it is a multiple ECU, we can use this line terminology up to four uh, or five. Yeah, you can connect it like this. And passive star technology means uh, you, to the single point, you will connect a multiple ECU like this. And the active star uh, coupler means a uh, second. There will be a difference uh, for uh, why, uh, which method, which topology we have to go. There are some criteria for going to this uh, topology. There are some advantages, uh, there are some dis uh, disadvantages. Okay. in each topology so basically uh, if you take point to point uh, um, topology you usually will use if you have a only two is used you can use this and the maximum distance between the two it is, is used limited to i guess it is a 27 meter uh, that's what uh, 24 meter yeah uh, more than 24 meter it's not available should not be more than 24 meter the distance between the two ECU and should not be more than 24 meter if it, if it is more than 24 meter if the distance is increases if length is increases the problem is uh, your data speed will reduce 
okay so this particular 24 meter is defined for the 10 mbps data transmission if you uh, increase your uh, distance between the nodes then the communication speed will come down that's a problem hmm? okay uh, yeah then uh, similarly the number of nodes we can connect for example line to line uh, point to point communication only two uh, issue will come in picture for example if you take this uh, method so in this method uh, the maximum number of ecu can connect it to the passive uh, node is limited actually it's up to uh, 22 yes more than 22 yeah we cannot we should not connect more than 22 issues into a passive node okay if it is more than that uh, and if you want to increase the uh, communication cable length uh, more than 24 meter in that case uh, you can go with the active star coupler so by basically active star coupler uh, technology uh, is uh, will give us the flexibility to increase the communication cable length communication cable length is increasing in say active star coupler is basically an amplifier this will amplify the signal and uh, that's why the uh, signal uh, uh, speed will not you will not lose the signal speed it will amplify the signal it will amplify the signal you can increase by it will amplify the signal also another advantage is if some node is faulty node you can disconnect that particular node without affecting the other nodes but also advantage of the active star coupler yeah you can see a particular ECU. So uh, how it is connected? Flux ray node. Flux ray node. This is one ECU. This is another ECU. This is another ECU. So these two ECU is connected with uh, through a. Eh? Yeah. In this particular case, you can see two channels are there. As I mentioned already, from the same flux ray controller, you will get the two channels. So the same information you are sending through the two channels. It's for the redundancy purpose. So it's going to this circuit. You see, it's going here. Uh, the same data is going here. The same data is going here. Going here. Going here. Okay. So the termination, uh, you can see the termination resistor here. Why this termination resistor is required? This termination resistor is uh, decided based on the cable impedance. In general, the flux ray communication will use the uh, twisted pair cable. Uh, shielding it's not necessary because of the cost reason. If you want to do the shielding, that also fine. Uh, but uh, shielding is not necessary. Twisted pair cable is uh, enough. Uh, enough. Okay. Twisted pair itself is enough. Shielding is not necessary. Yeah. Okay. So I will just uh, what is this? Twisted uh, pair cable. Oh. Now it is this way. I don't know how to take again. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Mm -hmm. How to get the pen again, whiteboard? Whiteboard. I'll close this. Be asking by poor. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm a beginner in this tool. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, what I said, uh, okay, the twisted pair cable. So twisted pair means uh, the cable. Okay, sorry. You will have a cable like this, and another cable will be like this. Here, you can connect your termination resistance over here. Similarly, you can connect. Otherwise, this cable impedance to avoid the reflections, uh, we are using the termination resistance because this cable have some impedance. 
this impedance uh, in flux telecommunication the impedance of the cable is coming nearly equal to uh, 80 to 120 ohm is the cable impedance so this uh, termination resistance also should be in that range i think this information what i said is correct uh, let's check uh, yeah, it should be in the range of termination resistance, should be in the range of 82. Yeah, 82, uh, 110 ohm. Yeah, 110, sorry. Sorry for that. 82, 110 ohm. So the termination resistance also should be in that range. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, reflections. Uh, if the impedance is not, or termination is not proper, there will be a reflections. So that will affect your signal quality. So to avoid that, we should give the proper termination. So yeah, exactly. The figure is available here. Exactly, the term uh, should be connected like this. This is the line-to-line -line, uh, communication method. Okay. Okay, then what else I want to share with you guys? Yeah, now we have discussed about. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, we can come to the flux ray bus levels. Yeah, I have a beautiful picture here. So you can see as uh, so before going this, I will again will come to the my whiteboard because I want to say something in the whiteboard. Yeah. Drawing. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have a flex ray controller. From flux ray controller, you will have the flux ray transceiver. Flux ray transceiver output will be connected to the external welder through one is common mode choke, and you will have a. You can do in this way also. This is the termination resistance BP, and this is BM pin, positive pin, negative pin. So this is your termination resistor RT. This is your common mode choker. Uh, I think I already said the reason for this uh, common mode choker to suppress the common mode signal. Uh, I, uh, I hope everyone knows what is common mode signal, what is differential mode signal. Uh, common mode signals are a signal uh, which will affect uh, both BP and BM pin together means uh, the direction of this uh, current flow due to the common mode noise is in the same direction. And the return path is uh, through the uh, parasitic, you uh, have the ground, chassis ground or something. The PCB, there will be a parasitic capacitance from this to this. Uh, so the return path is like this. From similarly, the return path is like this. This is the common mode noise signal. So uh, to eliminate this common mode noise signal, we are using this common mode choke here. The specification of the common mode choke, uh, I think we can uh, 50 micro Henry, more than 50 micro Henry. Uh, should be the common mode inductance. Uh, in general practice, we are using 100 micro Henry. And uh, this leakage inductance should not be more than one micro Henry. Uh, 
leakage induction should be less than one micro these are the specification and uh, this uh, resistance uh, the resistance of this line should be less than uh, two ohm resistance of this uh, series resistance uh, or yeah of this uh, coil should be less than two ohm these are the specification of this common model choker for flexible communication and yeah oh sorry again i did okay again i'll draw so yeah you have the flux ray controller then you have a flux ray transceiver then you have a common mode noise over here yeah, yeah. then you have a termination resistor over here okay this termination resistor rt as a uh, we have mentioned as it should be in the range of 80 to 110 ohm so this is basically because of the here this bp and the bmp so this will be connected to a twisted pair cable this cable impedances uh, will be in the range of 80 to 110 that's why we are using this okay mm. In some project, uh, some cases we'll use the split termination instead of the single termination. You can see a split termination. I think this also I already mentioned sometime before. This will be BP. This will be BM. The reason for this uh, this value usually called 1.3k, 1.3k. So. In general, this uh, there will be a uh, kind of minimum ohm resistance of one ohm something, but as most of the cases, we will not populate this, we will uh, put it directly through a capacitor to the ground. Okay, the, uh, so uh, it is not necessary that uh, all the nodes uh, should be terminated with uh, this resistor because you are connecting. Maybe I can show you here somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, so now you, you can see there is a picture here. I will just copy this picture. Let me see, uh, try here. Uh, it's well as possible or not, I don't know. That would work or not for me. Um. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next time I will improve. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. So it is not necessary to connect uh, all nodes uh, to be terminated. For example, I'm connect, uh, this is my cable one. This is my network. Okay. So this is our BP line. This is our BM line. So it's with BP. BM two wires okay basically so you can connect to one ECU from here to here this is one ECU ECU one you can connect to another ECU here this is ECU two it's not necessary to terminate here with the uh, if you give the termination over here to end, you have to give the termination of the 80 ohm to this should be 80 ohm to 110 ohm. This also should be 80 ohm to 110 ohm. 
at the end of this uh, two cable you can uh, terminate it in between if you are connect here also you, you can connect the ecu so this two ecu will be terminated with the uh, 82 ohms no? other uh, ecus not necessary to use this value should not be used there <laughs> not necessary should not be used there so some some cases yes, the termination is not uh, oems will not prefer the termination some cases uh, to improve the emc behavior they will use the split termination in such applications so in such application this issue will not be connected with the uh, in this range of value they will use the value of the resistance in the range of 1.3 k to 1.3 k 1.3 k they will connect a capacitor like this splitter. this will be connected here in this issue this is called the split termination the split termination is mainly used to improve the emc behavior basically this will couple this is not for the termination purpose basically termination is achieved with these two resistors these are the two values but if you take a parallel to this is values very high 2.6 k right altogether if you take 2.6 k with the parallel to with this value means if you take it's approximately the same value will come so it will not uh, affect the network impedance that means uh, the cable impedance totally cable impedance still it will be in the lies in the range of 80 ohm to uh, 110 ohm because since it's a very high value whatever you connect here here if you connect with this values there won't be any problem that should my point okay so then what is the purpose of this connection this connection is mainly to improve the cmc uh, behavior so through this path bp and bp and bm can pass the noise signal to the ground that's the purpose Then, uh, yeah, this BP pin, as I mentioned, as we mentioned, the BP pin and BM pin, two pins are there. What is the uh, voltage levels on this BP and uh, I mentioned earlier the logical signal level and the physical signal level. What is logical signal level? Logical signal levels uh, is uh, from the microcontroller to microcontroller to flux ray transceiver is the logical part eh? flux ray transceiver to the physical world the bus so flux ray bus that's a bp and bm pin this is called a physical signal so this physical signal range it's uh, here it's using the differential signals because you can see the bp and the bm uh, signal uh, we are giving to the flux ray transceiver two signals are there bp and a bm signal so it's a differential signal so flux ray transceiver will take the differential signal it will take the always bp minus bm this, this is the input of the flux ray transceiver so uh, flux ray transceiver uh, physical signal level if you consider uh, maybe you can say we can say it's a two level one is the recessive level another is the dominant level what is the recessive recessive level means if the differential signal is a zero that is called a zero volt differential bp minus bm signal uh, bp minus bm that is zero means it's called the recessive level and uh, uh, dominant means uh, uh, bp minus bm is not equal to zero it's called the dominant level so uh, i hope it's clear okay so uh, bp signal uh, for example yeah. if you take the flux ray transceiver the peak level of the bp signal is the 3.5 volt okay uh now i'm drawing the bm this is take it as a 2.5 volt bm level i'm taking bm level also i'm taking here bm level is a 2.5 volt again here then bm level is going to this it's going to 1.5 volt so if you take this difference of this here it is a zero here it's a difference of 2 volt so this is called as a dominant level. This is called the recessive level. This is called the recessive level. This is called the dominant level. Okay. So in dominant, uh, recessive means uh, 
uh, it's a uh, ideal bus is ideal condition so i'll clear this drawing this is yeah so uh, yeah so now i'm taking the dominant level dominant dominant level means uh, uh, basically bp minus bm signal not equal to zero volt resistive level means uh, bp minus bm equal to zero volt these are the resistive level and the dominant level. So uh, BP minus BM is equal to zero. BP minus BM not equal to zero. Resistive level means BP minus BM equal to zero. Okay. So in resistive level uh, means uh, this is ideal. The dominant level, dominant level. That's what I said. There. Uh, BP can be 3.5 volt. BP high level can will be 3.5. BP lower level is 1.5 volt. BP. Similarly, BM high level is 3.5 volt, and low level is 1.5 volt. So I'm drawing here a situation like uh, BP is 3.5. This is BP, and the BM is 1.5. This is BM. This is BP. BM is 1.5, BP is 3.5. So if you take this difference, it's a difference is 2 volt. So this is called the data 1. If the difference is positive, then it's called the data 1. Suppose BP is 1.5. I'm taking another condition like, yeah, here itself I'm taking drawing. In this case, if you take the BP signal is 1.5, BM signal is 3.5. BM is going to 3.5. So if BP minus BM in this case is equal to uh, 1.5 minus 3.5, that is equal to uh, minus 2 volt. So this scenario also called, yeah, minus 2 volt. Right? So this is called the uh, zero volt. Data, data one means two volt. Data zero means uh, data zero means minus two volt. So uh, domain okay. So data transmission is happening in the dominant condition only. So means BP minus BM is not equal to zero. Recessive condition means uh, data transmission is not happening. Is it clear? Recessive means uh, BP minus BM is always zero. So BP will have a two point five volt. BM of also will have the 2.5 volt. So now I will show this document. Oh. Okay, so can able to see 3.5 volt and 2.5. So uh, yeah, I will uh, discuss uh, this part first later. First, you can see uh, BP in BP is the red line and the BM is the blue line. So BP and BM have 2.5 volt. That is called the resistive bus level ideal condition. So BP is uh, high to 3.5 volt to BM is low. It's uh, there is a, so there is a difference of two volt here. So it's called the dominant data is sending one. So now it's uh, opposite BP is uh, 1.5, BM is uh, uh, 3.5. So there is a minus two volt. So it's called the data zero. So this is it. So the first level is called the bus level ideal low power. Uh, means uh, when this transceiver is not uh, supplied properly uh, under voltage condition, in such scenario, uh, also the bus level should be the recessive level. B b what do you mean by the recessive? Recessive means uh, uh, the differential signal should be equal to zero. That's all. So when 
powered condition processing means uh, you will have it to uh, means uh, sufficient voltage uh, the supply for the transceiver is available in that case uh, the resistivity means uh, you will have a uh, uh, 2.5 voltage BP and 2.5 voltage BM. So BP minus BM is equal to zero. When low power condition, there is no power on this uh, transceiver. So uh, output voltage will be is equal to zero. Should be is equal to zero. So uh, BP voltage also will be low, zero level and BM also voltage level also zero level. So BP minus BM again is equal to zero. That is called a low power resistivity level. Ideally, it should be zero, but it's not. A, it can be minus 150 millivolt to plus 150 because of the maybe some noise level and all these things. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's what I want to discuss. Yeah, maybe this bus guardian concept and all we'll discuss in the next video. We'll uh, discuss more about the communication level in the next section uh, i think we can uh, stop today yeah thank you very much uh, i hope uh, uh, this section will be useful for everyone yeah as i mentioned uh, uh, i don't have the clear understanding about the how to use this uh, tool so yeah sorry for that yeah yeah maybe next time i will improve a little bit yeah thanks thanks a lot yeah thanks bye